So for this third and last video in which we are going to see more advanced features of VFPX, I'm going to I've closed my previous session and I'm just going to start. And as you are going to see, if you remember in the last video, I um, we created a new scheduled flight. And as you, if you remember, I told you uh, PFPX is going to load on our schedule tab by default. And here we've got our last flight. And well, the only thing we need to do, uh, because if we go to the flight tab now, it's empty. There's no active flight. Uh, but we're going to keep the same information or the same um, preparation that we did for our scheduled flight. Now, if we're going to convert this flight into uh, an active flight, we only need to go here into the flight section and choose plan and then it actually is going to load all the information from our scheduled flight as you can see everything is green we could go right away but obviously if this is um, uh, a new flight is I mean it's the same flight but uh, uh, um, in, from you and we make it all the day we are going to have a different kind a different type of load and different type of weather so we should actually compute it again so that we are certain we are using the, the right information for our flight. Now, if you remember, we click on release flight and we get, we got another flight that already exists from a previous test of mine. Anyway, we've got here to the, to the flight plan. And then the first f advanced feature we're going to see, if you remember, I told you, uh, we were going to talk about TopCat um, in this video. And this is the very first thing we're going to do. Now, if we go to our flights, uh, results here we've got our flight plan and uh, we should have here um, uh, if you don't have top cut these two buttons are I think are grayed out uh, which means they are not active you cannot use them but if you install um, top cut then you can use them for references now before we go further uh, remember there's a list of limited aircraft if you remember when we went into the uh, aircraft database and we click on edit and top cap performance performance module sorry remember that you can only use the, this function i'm going to talk about right now if you've got any of these aircrafts um, it doesn't work with any other um, aircraft so forget about if you're trying to use for another one just these ones but in this case the McDonnell Douglas uh, 11 the MD 11 it, it is included so we can use it so if we click in takeoff uh, a new window uh, appears in this case where we know we've selected our MD 11 with this type of engine this is our takeoff weight if you have a look here in in our flight plan it's exactly the same uh, to include it here the same as the structural limit which is um, another way of talking about the maximum takeoff weight if you have a look at it it's exactly the same now we can choose the optimum flight configuration depending on the runway the altitude the length or we can force uh, Topcat to use one of these flap configuration for takeoff the same um, with the thrust configuration the air conditioning if we are going to have it on or off or and the anti-ice in this case if you have a look at the departure airport the temperature is 16 degrees so obviously not necessary to use anti-ice this is our wind which is pretty favorable for the runway 10 we are using um, the pressure here we've got um, a summary of our the metar conditions of the uh, airport well the only thing we've got to do now is to click on calculate and using this information well i forgot to say here we can choose if the runway is going to be dry or wet and if there's any um, limit in the in the runway that is going to make it shorter or longer sorry shorter not longer certainly uh, if there is something that we should take into account and we are not able to use the full of the runway either at the beginning of the end of the runway we should include this information here so that the um, calculation is right so with this information we've got a result that you should we should be um, taking off with a flap configuration of 10 and an assumed temperature of 60 degrees Celsius which I think is the maximum we can program uh, the MD 11 and um, well and we've got here just the, the performance limit and um, that's it uh, apart from this information which is here we've got other type of conditions uh, for example if we 
used a full thrust, no assumed temperature reduction, then uh, with the current 16 degrees temperature, we will uh, use um, an N1 of uh, 108.9, which is too much for what we need. And then another configuration here, for example, 100% uh, of N1 thrust, uh, that um, would be similar to um, would be the equivalent or a 56 degrees and while well, we are going to focus on the one we are uh, are going to actually use which is this one 60 degrees um, and then we've got the V1 is going to be 152 knots rotate uh, speed is going to be 157 and finally uh, sorry it was I, ca I can't remember why is this uh, hyphen for this should be v1 this is v that should be the rotation speed and this should be the, the v2 mm. i can actually remember what is this for sorry and finally we've got the, um, the engine out some informations of what to do in case of an engine failure now when we click on apply have a look here at the, um, at the flight plan because a new section is going to be included we click on apply and there as you can see we've got this section here with exactly the same information uh, here we've got the speeds I don't know why there was this high phone so the V1 final is going to be 152 uh, the rotated speed is going to be 166 and finally the V2 uh, is going to be 174 so these are the settings we should uh, set the bugs into when when programming our M uh, FMC and, and preparing our our departure right so that's all um, we're going to see now uh, how another of the advanced advanced options is if we go back to the to the tab of flight we can change our route in this case we've got this uh, right by default which was automatically calculated by pfpx but let's say that for example that we wanted to make a very beautiful uh, round the coast flight uh, maybe a turtle flight um, so we don't have to follow the shortest and fastest route but maybe we want to just go around the coast okay so in every map in pfpx both uh, both in in this world map where we see the route and in the next map we're going to see now we've got some tools here at the top and this is what we're going to see right now so at the left if we go to the route here we can click at the top and instead of in 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 route we can click on edit as you can see we can also save and load some route or we can go here at the top and in the route section we can click on edit and then as you can see a new window opens uh, on the right side we've got the map with the same route that we already loaded and what we're going to do is to delete all this and then we are going to delete and we need to build it again right now because we deleted everything the only thing we've got is a direct route from our um, origin to our destination so let's say the first we need to go maybe well as you can see first before say more things um, as you can see here we've got the, the um, limit of the different flight information of, um, regions all the areas that ATCs are going to control uh, so that we know every time we're going to change our our um, uh, control areas and all these green spots are the airports and now if you remember if you just um, put your mouse over any of these you're going to get all the information about them now one of the nicest feature features of pfpx is that we can we can uh, limit the information that we see right now we are having a look at large airports but we can also check medium airports now if we check right now we've where the screen has populated with many different aircraft uh, sorry airport for example this one in Seoul Dujiel we see that this runway is 400 4396 um, feet long um, which is pretty short it's medium it wouldn't be suitable uh, obviously it wouldn't be suitable for our MD11 now we can even have small airports and small means really small for example if we have a look at this one over here uh, very close to Alicante uh, then we see that this runway is just 475 feet long which is pretty pretty small just for ultralights or stall planes or things like that 
So as you can see, we can filter the kind the amount of information. Now we can also check more information. We're going to remove the airports because right now we're not interested in airport. And let's check, for example, VORs, navigational, uh, well, VORs and NDVs, navigational aids. So as we can see here, we've got all the in the navigational aids, but I think we may try to check just uh, waypoints. As you can see now, there are much, much. Um, there are many waypoints, uh, so this is too confusing. So let's go back to navigation aids. Right, so let's say, for example, we are going to start getting to Valencia. Now, what I'm going to do is click on the left on my departure. As you can see now, it's in yellow. That means that's the, the waypoint that is active. And I'm going to click in Valencia VOR. Uh, we've got several ones, but I'm going to choose uh, Victor Lima Charlie here. And we've got several options. First, create a route direct from Alicante to Valencia. We can create an auto route using um, um, high uh, airways, low airways, some advanced feature we will see before, or just, okay, create um, uh, an automatic route, but make sure you include uh, this VOR in the route. Right now, I'm going to choose an auto high route. As you can see, we've got our first waypoint here, I direct. Um, we're going to see, uh, uh, not either a direct, but uh, PFPX has created a standard instrument departure, a seed, and that one is going to get us to um, Valencia's VOR. Now, from Valencia, as you can see, it's now in yellow, meaning it's the active waypoint, and as you can see here, the left is grayed out, uh, that means also it's active, and let's go for example, Let's get to Barcelona. So I'm going to uh, several navigational aids here. I'm going to choose. Now, for example, in this case, we've got several navigation aids and I want to make sure the VOR I'm, chose, I'm choosing, um, it's connected to an airway. What I'm going to do now is click here on high airways of the ARPA space. And I see that the right uh, VOR I should use is um, Bravo Charlie November, which corresponds to Barcelona. So I right click Barcelona and have a look here. I've got direct from uh, Victor Lima Charlie from Valencia, um, and I'm going to use um, this option. If I didn't have um, Valencia highlighted, then I would be using the either um, the origin or the destination. So, for example, let's say now, uh, you see now how this proceeds, how to go. As you can see, you can see now uh, all the different airways, maybe too crowded, too confusing. Now, I'm going to take it away. Now, let's say, for example, that I'm not interested in covering the, um, covering the coast anymore. I'm just interested in getting into Barcelona. So how can I complete my route to my destination? Well, what I can do now is right click and have a look. Route to destination, auto high. And then from this point is going to finish the rest of the route. As you can see, there are a lot of possibilities in, in the route creation. It's absolutely flexible, it's absolutely great and fantastic. But there are more interesting things. And uh, yes, I'm going to apply the changes. But actually, what I'm going to do is reset and start a new flight. And let's say I'm going to fly in Madrid to. New York Kennedy, New York Kennedy Airport. All right, now there's something absolutely great about PFPX because I haven't been able to find it anywhere else. Um, in any other um, flight planning software, I've always tried. Uh, I've always seen um, that the software is not able to include um, GPS coordinates, as you can see in here. And if all the, 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 the flight planning softwares that I've tried, they always try to take you um, using airways from one place to another. For example, let's, let's load um, Flight Scene Commander so that you can see one example with this popular uh, flight planning tool. And you will see what happens when I try to create a route from uh, to Madrid to New York. So let's take Barajas, Barajas Airport and uh, Okay, I'm going to take a wave zoom and so uh, Okay, so this is the route. This is a direct route uh, Okay, 
but if I if I try to make a high altitude plan automatically look what happens it tries to always take us using airways so um, this is completely useless and then we should load um, we should load um, as I said um, tracks nuts and, and, and trucks uh, we should use a nut track uh, but it's much more complicated right now we've got uh, a very smooth and nice flight plan maybe it's not the, it's not the best it's not the best flight plan in the world uh, but because we are not following maybe the, the the wind currents and everything but it's a pretty nice um, a pretty nice flight plan and uh, I, I do like it now if we want to include that information from 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 NAT for North Atlantic um, uh, track routes now if we go here to them to the track we can choose the, for example, we are eastbound. We can choose the North Atlantic track, and as we can see, all the tracks go um, to the north of our current route. So probably it wouldn't take, um, wouldn't be very wise to 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 make all this greater distance. But what about, for example, if we take um, if we take a new flight, and we make instead of uh, from Madrid, we take from London Heathrow. Again to New York. Now, as we as we see, this route could benefit from using from using uh, North Atlantic tracks. So what I'm going to do now is going to go well random uh, playload and quick right. And as you can see now, it automatically is going to use the north the right North Atlantic cloud. Uh, sorry, route. And because um, it always remember it's always updated with the active sky information you are always going to get the right um, the right track um, this as uh, once again if there is any other uh, application able to do this I, I do not know about so um, it's amazing amazingly easy uh, other times I've tried to create um, um, oceanic routes is is a completely madness uh, with with other with other tools now as i as i as, uh, as i told you we can change the different the different atc areas or zones i'm going to take away airports to make it uh, clearer we can use several types of of uh, flight information regions and everything we can check which are the class two um Air, airspace and this is very nice because it will let us know uh, which are the wind components so in a very quick glance we see that um, we are facing winds in in all our route if we compute them we take the alternates and we compute the flights and if you remember I told you that one of the very interesting um, features here is the wind component of the full flight we see we are going to have a headwind an average headwind of 45 knots so we know we are, it's going to take this trip is going to take us um, longer than in a calmer wind situations and once again we are going to remove this and in order to check the adequate airports I'm going to make a, a new different route so I'm going to check to the flight new one and we are going to go from to um, Rio to um, sorry to Cape Town as you can see this route goes um, as, as uh, etops a uh, very typical etop route because this uh, we need um, we need to fly just across the water we have no option to to fly in any alternate airport whatsoever so once I get them them again the payload we plan the route we plan the alternates and we're going to change the plane by the way we're going to choose because this one is a three engine plane the MD 11 so but let's go for example for the triple seven no no template here because templates if you remember they are for the top cut uh, planes and I'm uh, sorry yes there's a template here I thought it was for top cut planes well we've got the template here for the PMDG I'm going to apply the changes I'm going to I think this is the I think this is the EKO code for I'm not sure but let's leave it like, like this so I've changed it now the plane and as you can see now we 
this compulsory, we've got uh, a red dot here in the advanced, which is the ETOPS configuration. Uh, right now, we need to check the scenario for the ETOPS, and we're going to check the um, you're going to check the um, 207 and as we can see this is the radio of, of the length that we can use uh, where we can go to our plane obviously these two circles these two circles at the beginning and at the end need to meet so that we can this is the area that we can fly with just one engine now because right now because right now uh, we've only got um, We need to set the which are the airports we are going to use as um, as, uh, as you can see at the bottom here we've got adequate airport so obviously one is our depart departure airport which is uh, so uh, sorry Rio and this is our la arrival airport which is the second uh, etops airport now with uh, etops configuration of 207 minutes if you see we cannot reach we are not within the range of flying with just one engine um, to get our mm, destination so this etops configuration it's impossible we could not make this flight the only thing we can mm, do it is disable etops but another thing we can do is go to our aircraft database edit our Boeing and then in our ETOPS configuration uh, create a new one a new one as far as I remember I told you I think it's th um, Boeing certificate is for 320 minutes uh, sorry I can't remember I'm going to delete it I'm going to create a new one ETOPS 320 320 and as you can see this is the diversion weight and the distance we're going to save it save the aircraft we close and now here we can change ah maybe we need to reload again I'm going to change the plane right once again I'm going to compute the flight in ETOPS configuration we've got here the 320 minutes and now as you can see we perfectly we are um, we this flight can can be done very uh, with all the necessary configurations now we do can compute our flight and as always we get all our flight plan and all that stuff now as we saw on our previous uh, video um, the all the information for the pl fl flight plans uh, is very complete but we can change it according to our needs first of all we've got a specific fl uh, format created by professional flight planner x but we've got here another template if we want to use it uh, we can also modify the ATC information that if you remember that we include here in this tab we can also modify it we can also change the what we are going to include in the weather in the note of airman at airman and and the track message now finally we are going to well if so i forgot to tell you that in the atc window we've got here um a validate function that is going to send this to official validation um authorities and and they are going to t tell us if if this flight plan in real life would be valid or if, if there is any kind of mistake right now um we've got other two tabs we haven't seen so far uh, the one is the traffic we can connect if we are flying um in where we are in our flight simulation we can connect it and we'll see here uh, a small airplane telling us uh, our current position so we can check if we are following the route or we have any kind of deviation it would be like a gps actually it works like a gps we can also connect to the uh, evao and or that sim networks um, to see who's online obviously this this um online services um control uh, online services have got their own maps uh, but obviously we can we can also use them here for our convenience we can check here on, on just one tool we can check who's online and who's not we can filter for flight ATCs we can check only one particular airline whatever uh, we click to disconnect and finally we've got the browser um, browser provides us with different kind of information uh, which 
just a browser i mean we only connect to websites but some of them are pretty interesting for example well in setup you, you can change all these links and add or remove anyone you want i'm not going to get into the into there i don't think it's actually necessary if you go you probably will figure it out yourself so for example we get, get into miscellaneous we get into the flight aware flight planning in another flight planning in the euro control uh, um, website the official batsim and iveo um, websites now if we get to america we get to several uh, weather information tabs which are um, maybe interesting for our flight planning of our satellite internet connection which is pretty slow in the in the ping and in fact there's a problem with the server so pff, no information here these are snapshots of the weather conditions at different times I think this one is not going. Ah, yes, this one is working. This one is um, there. Here you've got the date where where this information was loaded, so you can interpret your your flights. You've got some satellite pictures. Uh, well, anything, and you can, as I said, you can check it here. All the all the weather condition, and uh, I think you've got most of the information well we, we have two more things here if you remember the route manager if you remember when we first um loaded uh, pfpx we checked all that all the routes were were current and there hadn't been any kind of trouble well here is what you can enter create new uh, route uh, modify them and everything i'm not going to get into details um, there's another option is to the airport properties if we get to know some information about any airport for example the alicante one here you've got all the information that is included into the database obviously this information comes from the iraq uh, cycles uh, we, you, we can check it where in the map is uh, suitable we can add um, we can add manually uh, suitable al alternates or our preference our preference uh, um, our preference uh, I don't know how to say that no. our favorite our favorite uh, alternate and all that kind of information then another another uh, option is uh, again we can uh, look here for some um, waypoint information uh, we can create some of them some of them uh, waypoints uh, how is the search function I think it's only for creating new ones yeah, this is user waypoints. Sorry, this is user waypoints. For example, if you, um, I mean, this usually is for for flight plans. But maybe we want to use this tool to check um, visual uh, for uh, VFR flights, and we're going to add some uh, visual waypoints. We can also um, check them here and check the properties. Okay, so information about all also about the fuel plants if you remember we we have here we have several um policy names according to different um regulate international regulations we can check check all the details here and we can even modify them or create our own uh we can check here the weather conditions that like we saw the tracks information and okay so i think actually well, yes, there's only one more thing, one more thing. Um, we've got uh, on the world map, which is used by default. Here we've got a route. We can check here the weather of any any airport that we can, we will be using. Uh, the airport, the origin, destination, alternate, all the information that we may need. We can also have some information about the North Atlantic track messages, some information that uh, we should have in, into account. For example, you can see here some remarks, some interesting information about our route. And the scratch pad, scratch pad, sorry, we can just here write our own information. For example, if we are going to send this flight plan to to any pilot of our airline, or or we need to check any kind of um, note or important information for us, then um, this is the way where we can do it. So uh, as I said, I think this this is pretty much what uh, pfpx has to offer i'm pretty certain i've forgotten something or having got uh, some characteristics in very detail but i would say that 
you've got a lot of information to work with PFPX and, and, and I'm sure that with this information you'll be able to enjoy more your flights, to make them more realistic and to get as much information as you may need. So I do hope this is inform uh, this is useful for you. Uh, maybe we we can ch meet again in some other videos or, or something. So um, see you fine next time. Bye.